created these progress bars that are extensible, easy to operate in your code, and easy to customize. And I'm putting them up on the asset store. I wanted to walk through exactly what they do so you can create your own if you'd like or just grab it from the asset store. So let's look at the structure of each of these UI elements. Underneath the main parent, there is the border mask and the border itself. The border itself is just this outline here. It's easy to replace. And all of the sizes, the border and the border masks are created in Photoshop. So if you don't have something from the asset store or from your own artists, you can create any shape you'd like in Photoshop. I've gotten this shape from a mid journey prompt. Note that the border and the border mask are both set to stretch with the parent object. Inside the border mask, we have our fill background, which is really just a background for any situation where the fill is suddenly not covering the entire zone. It really should be covering the entire zone, so you likely could remove this, but it's a safeguard just in case something else goes wrong when you're setting things up. One option is to set this to be pink, so that if you actually see it, you'll notice that something might be off in your settings. The next two sections are the fill mask and the overlay bar. The overlay bar is the black bar that actually shows the progress here. Rather than making the fill bar go up and down, grow and shrink with the progress, we're actually using the overlay bar to hide the progress. You can see it right here in, in the scene view that the size, in this case the height of the bar, is increased and decreased with the progress of the bar itself. Note that the overlay bar is set to stretch horizontally, but not vertically. And the overlay bar in the horizontal stretches vertically, but not horizontally. The fill mask, which stretches with the parent, contains the fill image and an overlay image. You can put whatever you'd like underneath the fill mask. This is going to be everything that is visually represented of the progress bar itself. In this case, I have two images, one fill image, and then an overlay image on top, which is a mostly transparent image to show a slightly different look. And you can kind of see that as the two transition here. Both of these have a scroll and UV script. This script scrolls a raw image based on the speed you set. And it also has a little, and it also has a wiggle option that allows things to be a little bit chaotic. And now our animations are a little bit more calm. Let's look at the scripts attached to each of these. We have the horizontal bar and the vertical bar for the vertical. We also have this progress bar inspector test. This allows us to test at runtime. You just toggle the enable testing. Then as we move the progress bar up and down, we can see the changes. This way we can change the values of the progress bar and test in the inspector before we hook it up to any of our game logic. Note that the invert progress is defaults to true, which means as you advance the progress from zero to one, the bar appears to fill up with the fill layer. However, if you invert that, as you go up, the bar appears to drain from the fill layer. So dep depending on your project, you might want to disable invert progress, but for most things, I believe you'll likely want to leave that set true. When transition time is set to be zero, the transitions are instant. However, you can change this to another value and then the transition will happen over time. The size min and size max handles the minimum and maximum position of the overlay bar on the left and right sides or the top and bottom for the vertical. When we look at the red bar, it's almost gone when we're at 0.027. If we lower that to 0 0.02, we see that there is no red showing. We can then set the minimum to 0 0.02 and the maximum to just where the black stops showing, which is probably about right here, 9.98. So that means as our bar now gets to zero, it will actually be getting closer to that value of 0 0.02 and the value of 0.98. If we set this to be a very low value, you can see that the bar never actually quite fills up because at 100% progress, we're only getting to about 83% of the maximum width of the bar. Really quickly, the inspector test just has an update here. And if we aren't enabled the testing, then we return. If the last progress and our progress is the same, then we return. Otherwise, we set our last progress cache to be the current progress and we update the progress bar. Set progress is the one method you generally will call on the progress bar to set the value, you pass in a value between zero and one, and the progress bar will update. Both the horizontal progress bar 
and the vertical progress bar inherit from progress bar. However, horizontal progress bar doesn't actually change anything. I wanted to ensure that the system is extensible so that there could be additional progress bars beyond vertical and horizontal if you'd like to create more or if I choose to create more and also make it more obvious which one is horizontal and which one is vertical. We have all the public members along with some organizational headers, tool tips, and some range attributes in order to keep the values in the expected ranges. Then we have two properties here, both progress and progress percent. Progress will give you the value between zero and one of the bar. So in case an object needs to know the progress without querying whatever the progress is representing, you can do that by accessing the bar itself. And the progress percent will give that value multiplied by 100. It's just a nice helpful way to give a human readable percentage value out. Set progress is the only method that you really need to care about here, and that's the method you use to set the progress bar itself. The value needs to be between zero and one, and so if it's not, we're gonna clamp that and throw a debug log error. We'll cache that value, inverted it or not, depending on the option set in the inspector, and then we're going to choose whether we transition or not. If we don't transition, if the transition time is zero, then we're just going to set the bar value directly based on the current progress. Otherwise, we're gonna start the coroutine. If the transition coroutine is already running, then we're going to invert the elapsed time and then stop the coroutine. Otherwise, we'll set elapsed time to zero and start the coroutine while caching that coroutine as well. In our late update, we're going to handle parent size changes. Now when we change the size of one of these elements, the bar value is updated as well so that any runtime changes of the UI element are handled appropriately. That's a quick rundown of the progress bar package. You can get this from the asset store. I'm just gonna set it for free. Maybe in the future, if I make it even more robust, I will update that to a paid package, but for now it'll just be free. And feel free to create your own from scratch to learn from or download this and extend it or just use it directly out of the box. It's very easy to customize and make it your own. If you have any questions, come to the Discord, and I hope to see you real, real soon. Thanks.